Energy utilities, public transport systems, financial systems, they're all controlled by computers. Digital technology can make an industrial nation like Germany vulnerable to a cyber attack. With just a few mouse clicks, the country's financial markets could be thrown into chaos. Its power grid could collapse. Virtual threats are a real danger in today's world. According to one leading IT consultant, Germany's critical infrastructure would be easy prey for hackers. There's a very great threat because our networks are very open. For years we've cut back on security because we wanted to accelerate the pace of networking and data exchange. That led to the use of low-cost commercial components. And they always have a lot of security loopholes. Those loopholes have already led to serious consequences. In May of 2007, foreign-based computer hackers gained access to the German government's central network. They sent fraudulent emails to employees in the chancellery. When those emails were opened, a virus was loaded onto the recipient's computer, which in turn gave the hackers access to the government's information network. Security officers didn't notice the leak for weeks. The trail the hackers left behind led to China. Chinese strategists were among the very first to realize that computers will play a key role in the future that you can gain significant strategic advantages if you nurture hacker experts, which is why the Chinese are very well placed in this area. And they've constructed their own networks to make them easier to defend against attacks. Gaiken says most other countries are more vulnerable. Even the U.S. has been far too slow in preparing itself for virtual attacks, he says. But at least the Pentagon reacted by establishing a military task force in October specifically for cyber war activities. NATO is also taking the digital threat seriously. At its last summit in Lisbon a few weeks ago, the military alliance agreed to cooperate much more closely in the area. And since the publication of the documents on WikiLeaks, the need to better protect secret information has become even more clear, and governments are calling for action. It shows just how important an international discussion on the whole subject of data security is and how the manipulation of computers can cause problems for states. That was behind the talks in Lisbon, along with the discussion of the effects of cyber attacks. The virtual world as a battlefield? Experts agree that a new age of warfare has begun. Of course, there are many countries that are very interested in the issue because the cost-use factor is enormous. If you are a relatively small country or an individual that does not have a large standing army and you're afraid that a large high-tech country could threaten you one day, then with not much money you can establish a group of hackers in your cellar. You don't have to buy any planes, any tanks, you don't need the expensive outlay, you just need good personnel. This summer saw a good example of what can be done with good personnel. Large Siemens computers around the world were targeted by the Stuxnet worm. The Iranian nuclear power station at Boucher was also affected. Stuxnet was a very complex program. The only thing that's certain about it is that only a state would have had the resources necessary to write it. It's still unclear who carried out the Stuxnet attack. Iran blamed Israel and the West. We can always speculate and say whatever happens to suit us politically, but that would be pretty irresponsible. This has taught us a very important lesson about cyber war, that you can often never really know who did what. If it's done well, then in principle, it's impossible to say who did it. Regardless of who was behind Stuxnet, it's clear that worms, viruses and Trojan horses are not just a threat to consumers. States need to be able to protect themselves from attacks through the Internet. Experts also say that governments across the world are working on offensive digital weapons. Cyber wars offer a range of new possibilities. It's led to a certain belief in some states that if you can't be identified anyway, then you can try this or that out in times of peace as well. For example, if you wanted to weaken the West economically, 
You can do that with small, carefully calibrated acts of sabotage, like manipulating the stock market. You could disrupt industrial plants or do a range of things that would look like accidents or mistakes and might not even be noticed. But analysts agree that cyber war is still beyond the means of terrorists at the moment because large numbers of skilled software developers are needed to make attacks work. Small terrorist cells don't have the capacity, but diligence is still necessary. The lesson is that you need to increase IT security and upgrade firewalls to an economically acceptable standard. You also need to evaluate networks to see if they make sense and if they need to be reduced in size or decentralized. Otherwise, the blessings of modern technology could soon turn into a curse.